You wanted to speak to me? The name's Zalka. Have you heard from up north? From Bleeding Mark? I'm guessing that's a place. One of the desert's villages. They send their yield of ash blood so the Bereka over there can mark the skin of our soldiers. But it's been a long time since the last supply run. Too long. If you think something happened to them, can't you send someone to go check? Were it up to me. But with everyone fuming about our water rations, the commander can't spare any soldiers. My face paint will strike fear in your enemies. Take a look. You mentioned the village up north sends some supplies to the capital. Ash blood? It's a crimson stone that we grind into powder for our ink. Bleeding Mark has the largest supply. Our soldiers there gather and deliver it to us, in exchange for their water rations. Die for water. Everyone in the clan depends on the wound in the sand for their water. Capital and outlying village alike. But the last delivery of ash blood was weeks ago. Our supply is running low. So must be their water. If I'm out that way, I can look in on the village, find out what's the delay. You have my thanks. Head north to a ruin where the desert meets the mountains. That's Bleeding Mark. Ask for Kentok or Natika there. They'll know what's going on. Why put guards around the wound? You can't just take away our water! The wound gives less water. Our rations adjust. What's going on? We know the way of the desert! What's stopping us from taking what we want and- <clears throat> Anyone else want to complain? We're the desert clan. We survive with what we have. Your, uh, commander's not much for hand-holding. That is not our way. Even less so in her case. Shall we? Sure. Can't wait. She's with me. Drak is not the only one with harsh words for your commander. The desert has bred survival into our clan's blood. We spit at death and charge into battle. Maybe a little too eagerly.
This is the Outlander conspiring with the dissident Draka. Demanding water does not make one a dissident, Yara. Doesn't make Draka a commander either. You should advise him of that. Jataka said you needed help. Did he now? Aloy has a unique insight into the ways of the Old Ones. She might be able to fix this before it gets out of hand. Get to the point. What is Jataka talking about? There is no water. What do you mean? I mean the wound in the sand, that which provides the clan with the water we need to survive, is completely dry. Draka's people sacrificed a lot to get that water. He thinks you're hoarding it for yourself. The perfect excuse to challenge my command. Like he's always wanted. Of course he makes it sound very noble. That he only cares about his thirsty people. But all he really wants is to be in charge. And if he was, he'd face the exact same problem I have. There is simply not enough water to go around. This water source... Jataka said it's somehow related to the Old Ones? From what we can tell, whatever water we take, it restores on its own. Over time. A few weeks ago, it stopped. I ordered rationing, searched for other viable sources. But everything else nearby is tainted one way or another. But why the secrecy? Keeping your people in the dark seems to be making things worse. If the clan knew, my command would be challenged. There's no water, and you're worrying about keeping your command? Think what you want. Between the machines, the storms, and Regala's uprising, I'm the only thing keeping this clan from falling apart. Draka said your clan won't touch Regala. Her grudge is with Chief Hakaro, not me. And I plan to keep it that way, so her troops don't turn on my clan. Besides, if she defeats Hakaro, she deserves to rule. That's the way of the tribe. So how are you going to deal with not having any water? Ration what little we have. Buy time to fix the wound. And in the meantime, people die of thirst? Every corpse weighs on me. That is what it means to be a commander. What matters is that the clan survives as a whole. I can't promise anything. But if this wound was built by the Old Ones, I might be able to fix it. How exactly do you intend to do that? Just show her the wound, Yara. Very well. You can tell me when we get there. After you. The wound in the sand is this way. You're not Karja, or Osiron. I was born amongst the Nora, as far east as you are west. I've heard of your people. They say only those who are exiled leave your lands. There are exceptions. What business does a Nora exception have in the West? Believe it or not, to help people, even the ones who don't want it. Sounds like a difficult path. This is it. The wound in the sand. Definitely built by the old ones. Focus should show me more. Pipes. Leading outside the settlement. What do you see? A trail. What are you doing? Your wound leads underground. We've tried going down there, but it's too narrow for anyone to reach the bottom. Are you going? I think I can lead us to where the water comes from. Or well, used to. How? Doesn't matter. What matters is that the wound is fixed and my people survive. Lead the way.
That machine will shrug off acid. No good. Machines! I should be able to turn off my focus for a while. I can follow the pipe's general direction now. I can always check the trail with my focus, make sure I'm still on track. Those flowers. The crown's wet too. The vein must have leaked here. Not enough to be the cause of the missing water, but enough for these plants to grow. We're on the right track. You see all that from a patch of wet sand? Yep. Mound. It looks like the metal from the wound. We really are following its trail. As I've been saying, the desert kills, but it also surprises. goes past that ridge. We're gonna have to do some climbing. Nothing we can't handle, I'm sure. <laughs> some of machines. And a very dead soldier. Is it one of yours? I need to take a closer look. We need to get rid of the machines first. Full night. Lost armor's not gonna do much.
You know him? That is one of Draka's men. I will cut off that dissident's head and feed it to the vultures if he had anything to do with... We don't know what happened here yet. And we still have a trail to follow. Lead the way. Water. Barely a lick's worth. But there are no streams in this area. Which means it's coming from something else. Let's have a look. These anchors. That soldier must have used them to get up this cliff. He must have been going back to Arrowhand when those machines got him. Maybe he found something up there worth reporting back about. We'll find out soon enough. Is this the problem? I'm gonna need my focus. That weapon looks like Draka's man tried to pry this open, but he didn't know what he was doing. And now the water's not going where it's supposed to. Sabotage or ignorance. Maybe if I follow that main pipe, I'll find something useful. What do you need me to do? Just, uh, stay here. Let me know if anything changes. I'm gonna take a look around. A valve. That might help. Hey! It stopped leaking. 
It looks like that stopped the water flow. Now I just need to find a way to get it to Scalding Spear. That's the same type of machinery we found outside. Only this one's not leaking. Maybe it can help me switch the water flow. Gotta open the valve upstairs. Get that water circulating. <laughs> Not getting up through there. System switched back. Couldn't hold the water pressure. I need to find a way up to that valve. It's leaking again. Whatever you did, undo it. Better close that up again. Disappeared. Making progress. Is it done? Not yet. I'm working on it. The water's still leaking. Gotta try something else. Looks like it bypasses the damage distribution system. Maybe I can find a way to reroute the water through it. Upstairs. Get that water circulating. <laughs> Sounds like that did something. Hey, Lloyd. I can hear water in the room again. Anything leaking? Not that I can see. Let's hope that means my plan worked. That should do it. This will return water to Scolding Spear? Checking the wound is the only way to be sure. Draka knew what would happen if the capital was left without water. But he didn't care! All he wanted was to cause a crisis so he could challenge my command. We don't know that for sure. Meet me back at the wound when you can. Please. To make sure the water will flow. I will. Don't do anything rash about Draka. Only an upstart acts rashly. A commander bides her time. Hey. The desert was kind to lead you to us. Things are about to get ugly between Draka and Yara. Maybe I can head it off.
Mm, I can refill my pouch with these later. Hot. I'm sweating everywhere. The long march demands a full belly. I see soldiers guarding the wound in the sand. But no Yara. What's going on?
I see you, champion. Sit, please. You should know the rebels have been busy. They've set up outposts to the west. Some settled into a camp southwest of here. And I know the marshals can't deal with all of them, so I'd stay alert out there if I were you. Thanks for the warning. might stop the rebels from killing more of their own. Maybe I can lend the marshals a hand. Aloy, your Karja friend came through. She went to that Asaram camp you two were looking for, to the southwest. Aloy! Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. You sure you're okay being alone in here? I have Gaia. And learning how to interpret the glyphs of the old ones, it keeps me occupied. Have you gone back to Plainsong at all? I thought about it, but I wouldn't know what to tell them. The Chorus already thinks me a thorn in the thicket. If they knew what we did to Fa, even if they understood, there'd be little they could grasp about all this. No. For now, I must leave the tribe behind. So, how does a tribe like the Utaru manage to maintain the peace with warriors like the Tanakh? By holding them off. When our fields bloomed aplenty, the Tanakh looked upon our lands with envy. But Plainsong's dishes provided sanctuary and high ground to keep invaders at bay. In the end, even the Tanakh saw sense in a truce. The Utaru promised to provide the Tanakh with food from our crops every year. In exchange, the Tanakh would relinquish one of their own, a veteran, to train the Utaru in combat. This custom was abandoned a few years after the derangement. But some veterans still remain in the plains. I believe I've met them already. I've been meaning to ask, what's the deal with you and the Chorus? You didn't seem to be on the best of terms. That's what happens when you're the one Utaru who insists on publicly defying them. Twice. When the Karja invaded the Utaru plains, they did more than just attack our villages. They burned our fields, took our people as slaves, and murdered those who were too weak to make the trip back to Meridian. To be sacrificed in the Sun Ring. I was helping the healers back then, as waves of refugees swarmed into Plainsong. The Chorus was divided in how to face the invaders. Some saw sense in raising arms. Others believed the dishes would keep us safe, as they had many times before. And while they bickered, I buried the seeds of the Fallen. I couldn't have been easy, seeing your people suffer while the Karja invaded your lands. I come from a small village near Plainsong. My grandmother used to say there was no seed that wouldn't grow there. I moved to the dishes when I decided to apprentice as a healer. When the Red Raids began, I thought about going back. But the injured kept pouring into Plainsong, day after day. So I kept putting it off. One day, I woke up to hear a Karja raiding party had ransacked my village during the night. 
I've rushed there with the healers to help the survivors, but there weren't any left. The smell of burning flesh haunts me to this day. I'm sorry, Zo. I made it a point to appear before the chorus as soon as we returned to demand that we take a stand against the invaders. I was denied. So I left to fight on my own. You said you set out to fight the Karja alone? I did. But it turned out I wasn't the only one. News of my disagreement with the chorus spread through the plains. Before I knew it, I had more than a dozen Utaru warriors ready to follow me into battle. We knew we couldn't take on the Karja armies head on, but we also knew the lay of the land better than they did. We ambushed smaller raiding parties, sabotaged their supply lines, and hit their encampments at night. Sounds like you were a force to be reckoned with. Enough that the Tanakh took notice. When the clans began to push the Karja back east, they let us join their ranks. We chased the enemy all the way to Baron Light. You said you were at Baron Light when the Tanakh defeated the Karja? Tanakh marshals climbed the cliffs of the Daunt under cover of night, then attacked from the other side. Before we knew it, the gates were open, and the full force of the clans burst through. What happened next was... not something I like to remember. When all the dust and blood settled, I smelled it again. The stench of burnt flesh. Our enemies defeated. What was left of my squad returned to the Utaru Plains. I went back to Plainsong. But even as the harvest passed, it didn't feel like I'd truly returned at all. Is that when you became a grave singer? I thought soothing the suffering of others would somehow appease my own. Then you came along and gave me a choice. I could either sing at people's graves or fight for a chance to keep them alive. I'm glad you chose the latter. You mentioned you've been teaching yourself how to read? Yes. Gaia was kind enough to put together a list of glyphs used by the old ones. She helped me decipher some of the data you've collected and showed me how to use the focus to help the process. It's not easy, but it's been working so far. That's good to hear. Sounds like you met my friend Talana. Yes, the Karja Huntress. I haven't seen armor like hers since the Red Raids. But Varl tells me that she too suffered at the hands of the Mad Sun King. Yeah, she's one of the good ones. Trust me. <laughs> 